Okay, so welcome back to another edition of uh, the R series. And today we talk uh, a bit about loops in R, and also we take uh, in context the DNA sequence, right? Because uh, ultimately we are doing it for biologists, so you'll be able to understand better how R can be used for analysis of DNA. And for this case, uh, because we are still into the introductory lectures, we'll take a simple analysis of counting the number of ATGCs in DNA. And also we can look for calculating the GC content of a DNA. Right? So let me take you to our studio and start writing this script. Remember again, uh, programming is all about practice. The more you practice, the more quickly you start learning. And uh, therefore uh, to pick up, you must write the program yourself. All right, so here we are. We are into our R studio. And if you remember in lecture number four, I told you how you, how you could get this configuration. And here again, if you see, this is your scripting area where you write your script so that it remains permanent and it can be, it can be reused. Then this is your console. This is where your uh, water operations will perform will be shown. Also the output on, on the screen will be shown here. Then this is the environment variable area where uh, whatever in, uh, variables you use, uh, their values and their list will come up here. And this is the area where you can go for help, you can go for view, you could go for if you're plotting any plot that will come up here. Uh, for now, we're not using this area, but of course, when you talk of graphs and other things, uh, this area will become important. So I place my video here, and then of course, we start with the actual script here. Right? So here you are, uh, first uh, part of the script, what you're doing is you're generating a random DNA sequence. So to generate a DNA sequence, I'm first generating a uh, a vector that contains the four nucleotides, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine, here represented by A, T, G, and C, right? So this is my vector here, nucleotide equals to combine, and in brackets, A, G, T, C. So you run this, and you have your vector. So this is this creates a vector called nucleotide that contains uh, four nucleotide elements, A, T, G, and C, right? Then to generate a, a, a DNA of, uh, let's say, size of 10, what I use is the command sample. And in sample, I'm taking the, I'm sampling ATGC from the uh, vector that I've created, nucleotide. So sample, uh, round brackets, nucleotide. And I'm going to take 10 such samples here from this four nucleotides that are present. And because only four nucleotides are present and my length is 10, I have to write that replace equals to true. So one of these, any one of these can appear more than once in my 10 uh, nucleotide vector that I'm creating here. So the command here is DNA is equal to sample. Sample means you're taking a random sample. And where are you taking your individual components of the sample from? You're taking from the vector called nucleotide. How many uh, samples you're taking? You're taking 10 such samples. And you are, because there are only four nucleotides and you're generating a string of 10 nucleotides. So therefore I say replace equals to true, which means one nucleotide can come more than once here, right? And then of course I'm printing my DNA here. So this is your printed DNA. So when you run this code, this is what you get here. So you'll get a string of 10 nucleotides. Uh, here you are, right? So this is your string here. And just to show you that was random, let me run it one more time. And the new string that you get should be different from the previous string. So let me run it one more time and you can clearly see this is different from the previous string that it got, right? So this is now a DNA of 10 nucleotides. And what we now want to do is to basically uh, calculate the total number of A, T, G, and C in this uh, variable DNA. And also what we want to do is to calculate the GC content, right? So what we do next now is we first calculate the length. Of course, we know the length here, but we're just confirming that the length is 10 or not. So length one equals to length DNA, right? And DNA will be in round brackets because that's the argument for the function length. And then of course you say print length one. So when you run this here, you should get a value of 10. And that is what you get here, right? So here is your 10. Then we move on and we now want to count the number of uh, ATGC that are present. So for that, we initialize our counters, right? So our counters are, uh, for counting adenines, we say A equals to zero. For counting thymines, we say T equals to zero. For counting guanine, we say G equals to zero. And for counting cytosines, we say C equals to zero. So this, these are the values that are initializing your counters to. And then of course, now we want to count how many times an A appears, how many times a T appears, how many times a G appears, and how many times a C appears. 
So for that now, what we are going to use is what is known as the for loop in R, right? And uh, loop, you know, is a uh, is basically used to repeat something uh, uh, to a certain number of times or until a condition is met. In for loop, you of course you define the number of times the loop is going to run. The number of times the loop is running is running is fixed unless you break it in between. So here, what we do is we say for i in length one, right? for i in length one, and then we are checking the individual element of, uh, of the DNA variable here. So we say, if DNA i, which means initially the value of DNA, initially the value of i will be uh, one, and the element that we're checking is the first element here that will be adenine. And if it is adenine, then you say a equals to a plus one. So please uh, be mindful of the syntax. First, of course, is, uh, for a for loop, you have to uh, say for is a keyword. Then in, in round brackets, you have to define how long the loop is to run. For example, here I say for i n, one is to length one until the entire length of the DNA. So we know that it's going to run from one to 10. So 10 times is, the loop is going to run. And then you open your curly bracket, which indicates that the loop has started. And the instructions within this curly bracket will be, will be cycled 10 times. And the instructions within this loop will be done for 10 times. So now what I'm checking is if DNA i, which means I'm accessing the individual elements of the string uh, using the index i, i would be initially one. And at one position, you have an a here. So in which case, if you have an a here, then a equals to a plus one, which means the value of a is incremented by one. Then likewise, I'm checking for uh, thymine. So if DNA i, and let's say i the value is two so two is here is g so it will not increment t it will go down to the next statement where it comes to uh, this one here so now it says if dna two equals to g which it is right this is two right so therefore g equals to g plus one likewise it is going to check for cytosine and which are of course uh, one of these conditions will be met unless your dna sequence contains n's which you have not included here because it ourselves generated the DNA sequence. So that this is a artificial DNA sequence and we ensure that there is no end here. So therefore now what is happening in the loop is that uh, every single uh, element of the string is presented uh, with if condition and whichever nucleotide it matches to, that particular counter is incremented by plus one. Right? And finally you come out of the loop after 10 times and now you calculate the GC percent of the of the DNA that you're looking at. So GC equals to G plus C divided by length one. So that is to say what is the, uh, you know, absolute composition of GC and then you multiply it by 100 to get the percentage composition of GC, right? And then of course you want to uh, print your results here. So for that, because you are printing multiple values in one go, you say cat and in cat you open up the bracket and in the brackets, first you can give the description. So here in this case, I give the order in which I'm putting up A, T, G, C and G, C percent. So I define that the first value would be A, then T, then G, then C, and then G, C percent. And then I close this with, uh, with a double inverted commas. And then I print my actual values, which is coming from the counter A, T, C, and G, and G, C. So here you have a result, on, and if you've seen, I've started with a small sequence first, right? Because I could have given 100, 1000, 10,000, and it will still, the program will still run and give you the results. The problem is when you have a sequence as big as 1000 nucleotides, then you will not be able to actually calculate the ATBC manually. So for every time you write a program, it is important that you do a dry run with a small data so that you can exactly manually also see whether it is correct or not. And then, of course, uh, if it is working fine for a small sequence, it will work absolutely fine for a very large sequence as well. So here we are. Let us check what we have here. So we are looking at uh, ATGC, and then we are looking at ATCG. So there is an error straight away here, if you see. Uh, we are giving the order of the nucleotides here as ATGC, but when you're printing, we're actually printing A, number of Ts, then followed by number of C, and then followed by number of G. So if you see here, this is our print statement where we're printing the values. And there is, uh, if you cursorily see this, you'll find the error here, right? So this is voluntarily done to 
bring bring to your notice why it is important to do your testing on small sequence. Keeping this in mind, let's let's see our results. So first, of course, uh, this is our sequence here. If you see, this is your DNA. So uh, first, of course, you're given the count of A, one, two, three, four, and five. Right. So A five is correct. Then we talk of thymine. So thymine is two, and that is also correct. Then we talk of uh, guanine, right? And guanine it shows us two, but here in this case actually guanine is one, and that is because uh, at the place of guanine in your uh, in your uh, actual uh, statement, what is printing is the count of cytokine. So let me correct this first for you so that there is no confusion. So what we see is A T G, and then we'll finally give you this C, right? So now when you run this again one more time, so this is what you do here. And now if you see the values have changed, so this is uh, gone in as one, right? This is the only one in that we have. And then you have cytosines which are two in number, right? And then of course you're calculating a DC percent. So G plus C, if you see, is three out of a total of 10. And three by 10 into 100 is 30%. So this is a 30%. So this is how you uh, actually calculate uh, your ATGC composition, also the GC percentage in a given piece of DNA. Uh, here we have generated the DNA at random. You could also read it from a file, which I'll show you when you talk of uh, another example. And also you could uh, take it uh, as an input from the user. And we'll talk of that also as, uh, when we talk of another example. So three ways of input, you can directly ask the user to input the sequence. You could read it from a file or you could randomly generate a DNA sequence here as we've done in this case. So also what is important is that uh, we have done it the classical way here. I wanted to show you the, the hard coding for this. Also what I wanted to show you was uh, how the usage of for loop. And uh, remember for every such uh, kind of uh, analysis, there are specific packages available in R and that can allow you to calculate, let's say GC content by just one keyword that is GC. And in in the bracket, you give the argument DNA, and that will calculate the, uh, the GC percentage for you. So there is a specific package in R that is known as SEC in R, and that can do these uh, typical, uh, you know, these typical calculations with just one line of the code. Right. So we'll talk of that in the next lecture. Thank you. Well,